I do have this new theory on like possible like crop circles. Hmm. First of all, we we have to do an episode Agreed. on crop circles eventually. I mean, it's like a especially like the eighties and nineties. It was huge. Yeah, does it even happen anymore? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think the old guys that were doing it with their wood shoes. I mean, it's, way. so it's kind of like quicksand. Yeah, uh, right, right. Bermuda Triangle. kind of just disappeared. Yeah, Bermuda Triangle and crop circles. You just don't hear about it much. And you want to know what? If I had to put, put my finger on the reason why we started this show, mm -hmm. it's because of those things right there. <laughs> 100%, dude. Howdy, folks, and welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, That Would Be Rad. We are a podcast that majors in 80s and 90s nostalgia, comic culture, all things paranormal, and minors in retro video games, tabletop RPGs, pre-internet mysteries, and raising our kids to be half as cool as we were back in the 80s. We're your hosts, Woody Brown. And Tyler Bentz. What's up, bro? Hey, pal. Dude, it's almost like, you know, we've talked about synchronicity a mm -hmm. lot lately. Mm -hmm. And here lately, I got to say, dude, I've been taking these, and I don't know if it's just, man, is it is it is it that time of year? Mm. Is it just my age? I don't know what it is, but I've just been really just diving back into like 90s music, mm -hmm. and I've just been sort of like immersing myself in that world. And just as synchronicity would have it, mm. today, we're going to be diving back into the 90s. Mm -hmm. So... What I want everybody to do, including you, Tyler, mm -hmm. is I want you to picture this. It's early February 1993. Mm. Let me set the stage here. Bill Clinton has just taken office as the 42nd president of the United States. Mm. Aladdin is still dominating the box office. Mm. Michael Jackson's Dangerous album is playing on repeat. And Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You is the oh. anthem you can't escape everywhere. playing on the radio. Yeah. It's a time before smartphones, before social media, where if you wanted to connect with somebody, you had to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. They had that heavy old landline, a cord that, boy, howdy, I think the one that we had in, in, in my parents' kitchen uh, might have been a mile long. You yeah. know what I mean? And we then did it got too. tangled up, and then you have to try to figure out, and then ultimately, like, those tangles just lived there forever. <laughs> oh, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Actually, hold, hold on a minute. Before we continue, did you guys... So I feel like I used to do this once every week where talking about those tangles, you would basically like hold it to where the phone, the heaviest part, like the actual phone mm -hmm. or receiver was like hanging and you would just let it like spin to straighten out. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Man, kids these days will never... They, they never know. They'll never experience that. You know, we, we had like an old sort of like phone like that that we found... God, man, I don't even know. Just like in some dumpster. old, like a college box, you know, that I had. And my kids were like, whoa, check out this old phone. My son just had it in his room for like a year because he just thought it was the coolest thing. Anyway. Dude, every every time we go to like an antique store, my kids want to buy like an old phone. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you don't even know what this is. <laughs> I know. And But, you know, here's another thing that I've noticed about kids and how they like interact. So my son will call his friends and they're not used to phone etiquette, man. Because they can also like oh. voice talk on like video games and stuff like uh, mm -hmm. Fortnite and that kind of thing. And so whenever they get done with a call, they're like, all right, man, that's it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 did you just hang up on them? Did you say bye or anything? He's like, what? They're doing like what we always say looks fake in movies where like, oh. if you notice on TV shows, movies, they never mm -hmm. say bye. They just hang up. I mean, that's like my old, my grandpa used to do. He'd be like. We'll see ya. Yeah, you got to say something to let you know. And is it like, it, I don't know, is it like an old artifact from like the, the walkie-talkie days yeah, or something that I just can't get over? I'm not sure. But anyhow, this is the time period that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, you know, again, the Gulf War had just ended two years earlier. The Cold War had mm -hmm. cooled, but tensions between technology and conspiracy were only just beginning to heat up, really. Mm -hmm. It was a world on the brink of the Internet age but still clinging to these analog connections. I think we can all remember, and we bring this up time to, from time to time when we talk about the 90s. You know, we always remember that treasured AOL mm. online disc 
you know, sampler that you would get in the mail. Or so like a hundred of them. Yeah, use. yeah. But, you know, you'd be like, you could only use like the 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 trial code and you try oh, yeah. to like, and then it would like mess up and, you mm-hmm. know, you're just like, man, yeah, but I want to get on there and then like, I want to like get on a, in a chat room. These things are super cool, you know? God, me and my friend Robbie used to do this thing where we would get in a chat and we would pretend like we were girls. Oh, oh boy, let's go catfishing now, but go ahead. It, I mean, it kind of is. This was like long before catfishing. And then we would just like, like, <laughs> I mean, we, we would have been Only in like other people, cool man. Ninth grade. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And like, you have these dudes who are like, oh, yeah, send me a pick. And then like, already? No way. Yeah, dude. I oh, mean, they, did, they didn't know we were in ninth grade, but, you know, we would be pretend like we were like a girl in a chat room. Hi, I'm Alicia, blah, blah, blah. And then lead them on for like two hours and mm-hmm. then basically be like, we're a bunch of dudes. Um, <laughs> well, and you know, it's like back then you'd be like, okay, you know, hey, hey, as soon as the pick, it's like, okay, cool. Cozy up. If you got about two hours, two hours, yeah. I'll go ahead and send it over. <laughs> but then that will use up all of my uh, trial with AOL. So anyway, mm-hmm. this is a, this is a time that like, I think younger listeners just can't or won't be able to fathom you know, Mm -hmm. because of how different things were. And it doesn't really seem like it, I guess, whenever you grow up in that era and and you're just like sort of, you know, until you stop and think about it. Right. You stop stop to think about like all the conveniences that you have now that you didn't then. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is, and one of the things that we love about the pre-internet time period Mm -hmm. is for some reason the mysteries that occur within them kind of just feel more mysterious. Mysterious, they feel more fun to talk mm-hmm. about. They're they're just there's just something about them that we just love on this show and I'm so excited because today we're diving into one of the strangest cases mm-hmm. of rad strangeness that I mean, I've heard. It blends so many different things together mm-hmm. that honestly as we kind of go through it, I think well, I'll just give you my personal example. My mind has changed on what's going on here mm-hmm. dozens of times, and it continues to do so every time I like revisit any sort of aspect of this case. Oh yeah. So without further ado, man, I think I think we should dive in. Let's get into it. All right. So again, it's early 1993. I think February actually, mm-hmm. and in the midst of all of this, mm-hmm. something strange happened. A man named Gary Sudbrink, an Air Force captain stationed in San Antonio, Texas, receives a series of bizarre phone calls while visiting his family in Long Island, New York. Phone calls that, to this day, remain unexplained. Today, we're diving into one of the strangest cases of rad strangeness, one that blends doppelgangers, mysterious voices, and the uncanny feeling that maybe, just maybe, someone or something is always listening. So, Gary Sudbrink, who was an Air Force captain, Mm -hmm. stationed in San Antonio, Texas, and so he was working in like the medical pharmacy of, I guess, the base there. Mm-hmm. You know, completely rational guy, no history of mental illness or anything like that. Stand up character, mm-hmm. someone that everyone could rely on and stuff. Not someone that you would envision to make up the things that are that we're about to talk about that happened to him. Mm-hmm. Well, in February of ninety three, he decides to take a surprise trip back to Long Island, New York, where his friends and family are. Which, by the way, every single audio piece that you're going to hear, every single character that you hear Mm -hmm, talking, mm -hmm. absolutely love their accent. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say sounds like, you know, the Jerky Boys. I mean, it kind of does, actually. Yeah. But it's It's awesome. Saul Saul Rosenberg or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They're getting up there with the hot mops. Hot mops. Man, good times. Anyway. Good times. I think it's an important detail, listeners, to uh, remember throughout this And that is the fact that this is a surprise visit. He didn't tell his family. He wants to fly out there and just, you know, surprise, I'm home. Mm -hmm. Maybe his job, you know, he had some time off. He was able to kind of get away, some R&R time. And what's interesting is although the things really escalate once he gets home, Mm -hmm. there's something that happens 
even before he leaves, that's extremely interesting. Yeah. But it is important that no one knows he's coming. Okay. So basically, he goes to the airport, okay? Mm-hmm. And he has this strange interaction with somebody. He says there's this guy just mm-hmm. kind of standing around with a clipboard. He's dressed in like dark clothing, but relatively just normal attire, okay? Mm-hmm. And the guy comes up to him and says, hey, and he's got this clipboard. He's like looking down, right? And stuff. Are you Gary Sudbrink? He's like, uh, yeah. He's like, okay, and you're departing. Uh, yeah. And he's like, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm just uh, going to visit some folks. Oh, okay. And then that was it. Didn't really give him a ton of details, but mm-hmm. it stood out to him, not at the time necessarily. He, he says that he thought that it was strange, but again, he's in the military. And so, you know, yeah. he doesn't know. Maybe there's an intelligence agency sort of, you know, keeping track of things that he doesn't know about. He doesn't really think twice about it, essentially. Well, also, also uh, like, th- just as a product of, like, the times, like, we, but I feel like we look over so often, like, just this sort of, like, we were so much more, like, naive to things, mm-hmm. especially with, like, like you know, uh, people that are, like, officials or that kind of thing. So, like, for example, I remember as a kid, like, walking in Lakeshore Mall, and, like, you know, they would walk out, which this is a, Nobody that's like younger is going to remotely know what this is about. But like you, especially in Lake Shore Mall, you would have those people with with clipboards coming out, and they would ask you to do those like surveys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And dude, I, I did it like five times just because I felt like, oh, I'm supposed to do this because they're yeah. they're like did they official. ever did they pay you or uh, they I did they some give me coupons. Paid. Oh cool. Yeah, Here's it was pretty the, cool actually. Yeah. Uh, I've done some, I've done some like, you know, where they, I guess like, uh, what do they call that? Like, um, it's like a, um, test marketing or whatever, whenever you're like seeing something and then they, they play like 10 seconds of an ad and they're yes, like, okay, you what, know, whatever. Yep. Same and thing. I've done that kind of stuff before. Or like a test panel. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyhow, I don't know that he thought it was that, that no, necessarily, no, no. but, but again, because he's in the military, he's he's used to like people just making sure they're keeping track of everything. And frankly, and we'll talk about this later, there's some things going on in the world, you know. And so he gets on the airplane. And this is something else that I found um, in an, an actually in a recent interview with him mm-hmm. that he talks about when he was on the plane before he left. So he's already had this strange sort of interaction with somebody. Mm-hmm. Before he left, he hears like helicopters flying around. He's like, hmm. what in the world? And then it kind of just went away. Again, didn't think it, anything of it, but we'll come back to that fact later. So mm-hmm. he gets on his flight. He lands at JFK. Mm-hmm. And f- for our international listeners who aren't familiar, there's really two main airports in New York that you can fly to. One is LaGuardia. The other one is JFK. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into which one I like the best. But anyhow, so he, fl- he goes there. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. You totally... Missed another part. Not only was there one guy with a clipboard. Once he got on the plane, there was a, a totally separate guy with a clipboard mm. that sat in the seat behind him and was asking him questions the whole time. What? Yeah. And at this point, it it says that Gary asked the guy to leave, uh, and then moments later, a stewardess had to make him like get up because she realized that he was also in the wrong seat. And then he never saw him hmm. on the plane again. So that's two guys with clipboards just asking him all this weird sort of personal information. Man, that's weird. Plus yeah. then he hears like some helicopters flying around in the distance. Mm-hmm. It's almost like at this point, you know, the first guy, not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Second guy, you know, perturbed a little bit and... Yeah. Potentially questioning, like, what is going on? Well, well, he says he thought it was he was like a like a, a part of like the Census Bureau. Oh man, okay, just collecting voting data, <laughs> just, just on you know, whatever. Hey, sir, you forgot Airplane. to fill out this the, the 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 card that we sent in the mail. Yeah, uh, yeah, I tracked it down. Okay, weird. It's weird. Yeah. So he flies into JFK, and the mm-hmm. only reason that's even significant is when he arrives at his parents' house in New York. Mm-hmm. One of the first things that he does is he calls his friend. Mike. Mm-hmm. But Mike, when he calls him, is super confused because he tells Gary, uh, we talked yesterday. And not just that, they had apparently talked about how Gary flew into LaGuardia. Even though Gary, again, actually flew into JFK. To make it weirder, Mike says that Gary told him he was feeling sick with a cold. 
But Gary felt fine. He didn't have a cold, nothing, totally healthy, and, of course, didn't talk to Mike yesterday. He just got here. Which, dude, once you hear the audio, that's that's kind of mm-hmm. bizarre. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Mm. It's strange, man. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I think we can throw out the word that you're just dying to throw out here. <laughs> Go ahead. Doppelganger. I mean, is that what we've got going on? Don't answer. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. Uh, but, it was rhetorical. But one thing, one thing that I, I also failed to mention is after the second guy was like shooed away, apparently mm-hmm. when he landed, it kind of bothered him so much that he he ended up calling his landlord and That's having right. to keep right. an eye on the house. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he calls his landlord. I completely forgot about that. Thank you. He calls his landlord. I, he he describes sort of being. Um, yeah, thinking like, man, are these people know me? Are they going to go to my apartment and, and steal mm-hmm. something? And I remember him saying something along the lines of like, I'm not real sure why I was yeah. worried because I was kind of poor and I didn't really have a ton in there, you know? Yeah. Not necessarily well, poor, well, but also like, a bunch. like being in the Air, the Air Force, I wonder if, you know, I wonder if he was thinking of it in like possibly that sort of sort of scenario as like, well, you know, it, are these people like sort of trying to get information? Like, is it like a, because, you know, even like lower end or not lower end, that's not a good way to put it, but like lower ranking uh, members of, you know, our armed forces, like I would imagine that you're, you know, it's kind of like beaten into your head of like, mm-hmm. hey, always kind of be on the lookout. Right. Don't give too much information. You know, that kind of whole, especially the Cold War era sort yeah. of Oh yeah, stuff. for sure, for sure. Okay, so... He talks to Mike. He, I mean, at this point, dude, you've got to be just like, what is going on, man? Am mm-hmm. I in another universe? Yeah. I would be kind of freaking out a little bit, but then maybe I would be like, I don't know. I don't know that I could just be like, okay, Ma, you got the spaghetti. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Ma. Yeah. 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 So even although all that is already just strange enough, mm-hmm. the real strangeness begins when Another call comes in, I think, while he's talking to Mike, actually. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the early days, again, of not really necessarily early days of call waiting, but I was thinking about this when I went for a run the other day. I feel like that sound, that boop, boop, kind of evolved yeah. and made its way into our, you know, the current era. When we get a call when you're on your like smartphone or whatever, that same mm. sort of sound mm-hmm. is, you know, I think in the in the old days, it would just sort of be like a weird, like, the audio would sort of drop out and there'd be like a click or something, right? I couldn't remember. I'm like, why oh, can't I remember man. what the early days of call waiting sounded like? Dang, dude. I, th- th- I hate these moments mm-hmm. where like you realize like I will never be able to There's remember. A gap. Your, your, your brain like deleted that file. Yeah, dude, yeah. exactly. Well, listeners, help us out here. Comment on our Instagram post and, and let us know what we've forgotten. I, I, can't, I can't remember for the life of me. But anyhow, he gets this alert that there's a, another call coming in, so he clicks over. And by the way, younger listeners, what you had to do was you had to press the hang up button. Mm-hmm. There wasn't like a you know green answer call <laughs> like right. there is now. Mm-hmm. And you click over to the other line, and what he hears on the other side, well, I mean, it's just unsettling to say the least. Oh, yeah. There's this deep mechanical voice almost robotic that mm-hmm. begins to speak to him. Instead of hanging up, though, Gary does something that would turn out to be crucial, and honestly, it's probably really the only reason that I think this story has stood the test of time, mm-hmm. and, well, it just makes it so much more interesting. He hits the record button on his answering machine. Yeah. Now, folks... Again, for the benefit of those that either don't remember or are younger, back in the day, you'd have these answer machines that were connected to your phone line. Of course, they would, you know, pick up the call after a certain number of rings and they would record onto, at first, it was a a cassette tape. Mm -hmm. Yep. The technology improved over the years, but initially, and I would say probably in 1993, I don't know if he had a tape, I don't know what his specific machine was, but... There were, you could, 
Would it have been the little mini tapes by then? Probably, yeah. 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 And you had the opportunity to sort of record what was going on via that device. Mm -hmm. And again, I think one... Initially, when people hear this, right, and we're we're about to play the call, so don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. But when people hear this story, myself included, initially your first thought is, why? Like, how did this guy know to press record? See, I started this journey on this story mm-hmm. without any of the, hey, this guy with a clipboard came. Hey, my friend Mike. I just started listening to the call, and I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, why would you just know to record a phone call? That's so like made up. But now, having the full context, you've had all these different things that are so bizarre kind of stacking up. Mm -hmm. Each one of them individually might not make you worried or think about anything, but combined together sort of create this like mentality. It's like, dude, somebody is messing with me. Something's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm recording this, especially with the way this voice sounds. Oh, yeah. And and also, before we continue, Mm -hmm. I I just, I got to put in here that like the um just the the similarities you know in some of the episodes that we've done you know especially going in and I don't want to like front end load anybody but you know it was hard for me not to think of like Sam the Sandown clown mm-hmm. even the little the creatures from last week's episode mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's that like sort of you know artificial kind of uh even though last week's episode was a little different but yeah you know, clicks and stuff, but or like like pigeons or doves, but mm-hmm. uh, but it's it's it it is something which you know is kind of like Tim Marchenko's disembodied voices. Mm-hmm. It's that like artificial sort of voice thing where it's kind of there, but then also like oh, this sounds like a robot. Yeah. Here, here's the thing: we're kind of jumping the gun with what it all sounds like. Let's not let, we're, let's not explain it to death. Let's just click play on this tape and let's listen to it. So here, guys, is the very first. Phone call. It's a recording straight from Monday, February 8th, 1993, 10 30 p.m. in Long Island, New York. After these messages, we'll be right back. It's a pretty cool place. If you're a Martian or a vampire, or a vampire. you think you really know what's happening around here, don't you? Fighters for truth, justice, and the American way. Hey, this is Woody. And this is Tyler. And you're listening to That Would Be Rad. And now, back to our show. All right, here goes the uh, the first call. Here we go. Okay. Yes. I'll tell you who it is. Hello? Yeah. Do you want to speak to him? Is Gary's son drinking there? Yeah, who's this? Steven? Are you playing games with me or what? Huh? Steven, if you're playing games, I'm going to kick your ass. So how long are you going to be back from Texas? Huh? You're being impersonated by the other voice. Yeah, this is you, Steven, you idiot. You're pissing me off. Jerk. I'm gonna get you once. Let's see what it says. Review. One new call out of area. Is Steven out of the area? Are you going to be back from Texas? Wait, say that again? You are being impersonated by the other voice. Wait, hold on. Is Steven out of the calling area or what? What do you mean you don't know? He's in Queens. Who are you talking I don't know who the fuck. Hello? Is Gary's son drinking there? Who is this? Hello? How long are you going to be back from Texas? What was that again, sir? You were being impersonated by the other voice. Oh, be quiet, huh? Sorry, would you see that again? Hello? Being impersonated by what voice? 
a second. Okay. Yeah, what is your question? I'll answer it. So how long are you going to be back from Texas? How long will you be being impersonated by the other voice? Right. When am I coming back? Is that your question? Okay, there was a break. Hold on. You want to know when I'm coming back to Texas? Oh, is that your question? So how long are you going to be back from Texas? How long am I going to be back from Texas? That question doesn't make any sense. By the other voice. Okay. I'll be coming back eventually. Um, I can't tell you when. You should know that question, the answer to the question, because you seem to know more about me than I do. You know what I'm saying? Are you an intergalactic uh, person? Are you an, a space alien? Sounds like you hung up. I can't believe this. It's He hung up, Gary. Yeah. See if he comes back. All right, I'll hang up. All right, so that's the first uh, that's the first call, dude. Tons to unpack here. Oh, first, like I said, gosh. dude, it's hard. Here's the thing. It's hard for me not to just like smile and sometimes laugh throughout because it, yeah. it just immediately reminds me of, I almost keep saying Crank Yankers, but um, Jerky Boys. Jerky Boys, yeah. And then also there's this other old school internet video thing where there's like this li- lizard or whatever. He's like, who, who the F does he think he is? Tommy Noble? Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so it's hard for me. Like every time he's like getting mad, it just makes me laugh, dude. And I love too. Like the mom's like, he like Gary's getting fed up, and he's just like, I don't know who this is. Now he keeps on referring to Stephen. Stephen is his, I believe it's his older brother. Yeah, I think that's who he thinks it is initially. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love the the family dynamics. Just hilarious. You can hear the mom in the background like, who is it? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know, it's Steven, it's somebody, blah, blah, blah. And then she gets on and she's like, hello? And then she just gives up, gives it to the dad. And then the funniest thing. No, she's and, like, it sounds like a robot. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the dad's on like another phone. That's why they're both sort of, and Gary and his dad, sort, their voices are pretty similar. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to distinguish sometimes. But mm-hmm. the, the dad just kind of comes out of nowhere. First call in, dude. Now, remember, this is the very first call. Mm-hmm. We're not even maybe three minutes into it. And the dad's like, Wait, what does he say exactly? Well, I'll tell you just a second. Are you an is it are you an intergalactic person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he says. He says, Are you an intergalactic person? <laughs> are you a space alien? <laughs> like, just out of the gate, dude. Didn't wait for it. It was just like, hey man. You know what I mean? It's amazing. I can imagine because print calls folks were big back then. I gotta oh, yeah. say, I used to do it all the time. It was so all much fun. Time. And if I just hope, and like in my heart, as long as it wasn't just like, you know, torturous to the old guy, mm-hmm. I hope that he asked every single prank caller that in his entire life. Yeah, oh, Are yeah. you an intergalactic person? <laughs> it's amazing. Space alien? I, I think, I don't know, it, it is just like, I don't know if any like of our younger listeners would, are getting this sort of like warm, like fuzzy feeling, but I guarantee like our older like, you know, born in the 80s, lived in the mm-hmm. 80s. Uh, I guarantee those listeners are getting that feeling. Just even just from like that, like, like that hum. Right, right, right. Kind of sound of like a landline and like, you know, especially like having his dad on the phone, it like mm-hmm. sort of doubles that sort of mm-hmm. hum in the background. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, it's so like sort of innocent in a way. Yeah. And, and it's definitely weird. I mean, there's definitely like, some of the phrases you can tell are 100% like almost like a soundboard type thing where kind they're they're kind of you can tell that they're they're like the same clip like repeating kind of but you know what's funny is like I thought the same thing the first maybe the first time or so and I think that's a, that's a pretty familiar criticism of this whole entire thing in terms of looking at it through the lens of some sort of hoax a hoax not necessarily that Gary 
uh, perpetrated, but maybe potentially someone else, right? Something human, something, this, mm-hmm. you know, the simplest answer or whatever. Oh, I'm not saying it has anything to do with the hoax. I'm well, just I'm saying, just saying, like, it seemed at first, if I'm looking through that lens, oh, um, that does sound, but there are times whenever I was listening to that when I was like, because it is funny in the terms of, uh, like, again, it did kind of make me giggle, mm-hmm. as creepy as it is to think mm-hmm. about and to imagine yourself getting these calls, when it's just like, hey, wh- what's the problem? What do you want to know? When are you going back to Texas? Yeah. You know, like, how long am I going to be back from Texas is what he actually said. And so when you break that down, how long am I going to be back from Texas? Oh, weird. Right? Yeah. And there's a bunch of stuff like this that begins to happen in these calls. Uh, mm-hmm. Because, by the way, this isn't the only one, listener. Yeah. That just make you think, like, what? So the choice of words is interesting. And then also... You know, again, that initial listen, you're thinking, well, maybe it's just kind of like a slowed down voice, and we'll get to to that theory in a second as well. Mm-hmm. So that was the first call. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, well, also ahead. real quick, th- you know, we were kind of laughing about his dad co- immediately coming out of the gate asking if he was an intergalactic person. So I think Gary and his dad both were members of Laufon, which is Long Island UFO Network. Mm-hmm. I think, right? It was yeah, Gary something like that. I don't think Gary was initially, but eventually dad his was. dad and his uncle, who, by the way, his uncle was also in the house, and so he oh, is also another witness it. to all this. So the mom, Gary, the dad, and the uncle, four people listening yeah. to this going on. And he had two brothers, Stephen, who's a year older, and Brian, mm-hmm. who was five years younger. Mm-hmm. Again, his immediate thought when he got this call was that Stephen was messing with him. Now, Stephen wasn't really known, according to to Gary no. and the family, for being the one to pull pranks. Right. And there was something odd that happened to both of them mm-hmm. uh, a few years earlier, both Stephen and Gary together. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what it was was Stephen w- had been driving to a wedding in Long Island when he saw Gary pull up next to him in a car, making goofy faces to get his attention, and then just drive off. The thing is, yeah, Gary didn't even have a car in Long Island at the time, let alone the same make and model Stephen swore he saw. Right. Now, again, fast forward to the night of this bizarre phone call in 1993, and here we are just a few minutes after that first call, which I can only imagine, really, they're all just kind of sitting around being like, man, that was weird. Ah, don't worry about it. It was just Stephen messing with me, something like that. The, mm-hmm. the phone rings again. And then this time, Gary hits record as soon as he recognized that same unsettling voice, yeah, and now it's eleven ten p.m. and here's the second call. Well, real quick, just before you play Sick. that, um, sorry, I know. Keep in mind at that time. I mean, it's still kind of a, an issue, you know, for my family nowadays. If we get a call just randomly that late, but to call somebody on their landline, what time you say? Eleven what? It was eleven ten p.m. So to to call like past eleven on somebody's like home landline was like. It's just something you didn't really do. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. So I mean, you know, same same as now. I'm immediately gonna assume something's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. All right, let's listen to the second call. Okay. Yes, uh speaking. Yes. Can I answer you any questions for you? Um, not back yet, no. How long have you going to be back? Let me answer. First, you tell me where are you calling from? Yeah, why don't you tell me where you're calling from? What do you mean, who is this? You should know who it is. It's me, Gary. Uh, wait, let me, let me ask you this question. Where are you calling from? Okay, I'll be back. Excuse me? Back. 
I can't hear too well. Yeah, it is a full moon out. That's true. Could you identify yourself? Identify yourself. Why are you calling me? Excuse me? I cannot hear too well. Get on the other phone, it's better. Hold on, let me switch phones. Okay. Okay, hold on. Now, who are you? Keep an eye in the sky, he said. Keep an eye in the sky? Yeah. Can I ask Kenny, I talk to him? Shh, shh. I had a sighting. Okay, hold on. Uh, say that, repeat that again. Please repeat. Okay. Near Orion. Near Orion. Holy mackerel. Tonight or this one when? The full moon. Repeat. Okay, repeat last word. I'm hearing static. Follow my life to He hung up. He hung up. Hello? Man, there's so much in that call that's extremely interesting. First off, again, every time he says, are you back from Texas? It just makes me laugh. But <laughs> yeah. the thing that just stands out to me, of course, just right away, the other voice, mm -hmm. when Gary says, like, he, he keeps on trying to get this person or entity to tell him, where are you calling from? Where, you know, where are you at? And then the voice says, keep your eye on the skies. Yeah. And Gary's like, excuse me? And he says, near Orion. Yeah. And he says, the full moon. And Gary says, yeah, there's a full moon out there. That's true. And then he keeps on saying, like, can you identify yourself? Can you identify yourself? And he just keeps on saying, keep an eye on the skies, near Orion. And then you hear the dad in the oh, background. Love him. He, he hears Gary say that, keep an eye on the skies. He's like, keep an eye on the sky? And Gary's like, yeah. And he's like, ask him, can I, the dad says, ask him, can I talk to him? And Gary's like, shush, shush, shush. And then the dad's in the background going, I had a sighting already. Yeah. So there's a couple of things we get from that. Number one, now we know that Gary's dad mm -hmm. has some sort of UFO experience. Mm -hmm. which, and, which honestly is probably why he's a member of the Long Island move mm -hmm. on, basically. Yeah. yeah. It also brings a question to mind initially, too, that's just like going back to what I was joking about previously, which is like, does he just constantly expect these types of things to happen? And 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 so, if anything strange happens in his life, he's like, "Here they go, here we go." This is I mean, them again. Again, that's like that innocence though that I I love so much about this. It's well, like, yeah, and also like, is that? Do you think that that would be true anyway? Like, if you had a strange experience like that, like mm -hmm. a sighting of UFO or anything like that. I feel like when I read about these accounts and when you read about the people that experience them, they do have this strange sort of lifelong sort of connection. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they feel almost emotionally connected to whatever it was, good emotions and bad emotions, you know, whatever yeah. the case. Uh, and I feel like maybe that's what's going on here with the dad. Well, I mean, I can say like personally from, you know, being a person who's experienced like several sort of varying different sort of, I mean, maybe not paranormal, but like anomalous, at least, sort of scenarios. I can say that like, like after the the very sort of first one, which would have been like my shadow man sort of thing, everything that happened after that moment was kind of like, there was a little bit of a feeling of like, oh, of course this is happening. Like, because you've already experienced like something so mm -hmm. crazy that you're just sort of like, Oh, of course, like the windows now open 
to yeah. allow this stuff in. You know? I guess it doesn't really feel, you're somewhat desensitized? Yeah, a little bit, okay. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is that the voice says, well, first, I love the expression the dad says. He's like, holy mackerel. <laughs> and he's like, tonight? Yeah, or, nah. And he's just, he's so excited. He, like, I can just picture him like already running out the door to, to look at the moon, to look outside. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Zero fear. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so I think that's, that's, uh, that's interesting as heck. One other detail about this call is, so kind of towards the end, right after the dad is like the New York Marty McFly at yeah. age 65. Mm-hmm. Holy mackerel. The voice says the full moon. They mm-hmm. keep on talking about that. And then the voice says, show double of you. I'm so glad you said it. That's my favorite part yeah. of this. Because the other ones he repeats numerous times. He keeps saying like, well, it's interesting because the first time he just says Orion. Mm-hmm. But then then at several other times he says like near Orion. Mm-hmm. And then he says the full moon. But the he says like, which he only says this one time throughout this whole conversation where he says, show double of you, which is like really off-putting to me. Yeah, and starts to kind of make Mm -hmm. you lean toward Mm -hmm. there's some sort of potentially doppelganger situation here. Yeah. And I mean, I hate to do it, but we're going to keep on pushing that sort of finish line Mm -hmm. further away because I don't want to talk about what we think it is just yet because, like I said, my mind is continuously Mm -hmm. sort of changing in terms of my opinion about what's going on here. Yeah. Well, also, before we get into the next one, I do have to say it's interesting because there's parallels with this particular case and these particular phone calls that that kind of are parallels to the the way and our reaction to things from the beginning of our show— Mm-hmm. Till now, because you know we're on season four, right? Where I would say those very first few episodes, even though me being like a lifelong sort of fan of the paranormal, and I'm you know, I was already kind of into all this stuff, is into UFOs, into aliens and stuff. But as we've gone along, you know, we we start kind of going down avenues that are a little more subtle, a little more gray areas, instead of it being like, oh, it's either aliens or ghosts or You know, it's these very sort of like definitive things where Mm -hmm. I feel like now we're in a much more sort of nuanced place of like, well, maybe it's like an interdimensional thing, or maybe it's like a Nephilim thing, or maybe it's a uh, some sort of weird high strangeness, or like you know, it's it's like there's there's it's not so like blatant now. Mm -hmm. I feel like our opinions, and so it is like it is sort of uh, nostalgic hearing. There, especially the dad hearing him going directly, yeah, into oh, it's space aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point, man. Because like at the time, it's like that's all you had. Yeah, X Files. Yeah, right, right. Vibes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that time too was just it was kind of pop culture wise, like everywhere. I, I think. Oh yeah. You know, like Independence I Day. Independence, maybe I don't. I think it might have come out in '94. I'm not sure. I'll let you look that up. Yeah, I'll look it up. But also, like Alien, the the, the skateboarding brand, right? I think it was oh, called uh, Alien, Alien, Workshop. Alien Workshop. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And so you're just kind of in and in, you know, everyone's slapping like Alien face stickers on your notebooks and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Dude. I just feel like that that I love. Just like you said, I'm so glad you brought that up. Like there is this just immediate nostalgia to that being the the thing that. You, he just goes to straight away. Yeah. Whereas now, although it can kind of sound like maybe we've just given up on trying to figure it out, we're just like, I don't know, man, time travel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, uh, so Independence Day was 1996. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so not there yet. So not there yet. Mm-hmm. But anyway, as if those two calls weren't enough, the stranger called back a third time that same night. And... Before we listen to this third call, I kind of want listeners to think about, like, so far, did your opinion sort of evolve throughout the first and the second call? You know, Mm -hmm. initially, did you think, oh, yeah, straight up prank, somebody just kind of slowed the audio down, and they're just, like, pressing, they're just, like, playing clips. Which, by the way, and we didn't really dive into it after the first call, but, you know, yeah, we used to prank call people all the time. Me oh. and my friend Garrett Tomlinson, if he's listening, hello, Garrett, uh, mm-hmm. brilliant-minded guy. But we used to prank call people all the time, man. We would get oh, like yeah. the the uh, phone book, 
and we'd just find a number and we'd just be like, bump, 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 bump. You know, once we figured out how to hide your, your caller ID from the person, man, we would call folks and just be like, oh, yeah. you know, just doing all kinds. And like, sometimes it would just be crazy. Like they'd answer and be like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which is terrible. We'd sometimes call and just be like, hey, uh, you know, I was buying my, and so because you're doing it from the phone book, you know the person's name. Mm -hmm. The best challenge ever was just trying to get them to think, you, you would try to get them to say somebody's name, right? So, mm -hmm. hey, is Judy there? Yes, this is her. Uh, how are they going? Who is this, Earl? And you'd be like, oh, yeah. They're like, Earl, what's going on? You know, I was going over there. And they're like, uh-huh. And then finally they'd figure it out, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and so I'm curious, listeners, where your head's at. I mean, I know you can't tell me right now as you're listening, but uh, if you're anything like me, like I've said a million times already, my mind keeps on changing. Yeah. Also, sort of side note, there's this guy on Instagram now that this, for some reason, I, it's hard for me not to think of this. Have you heard like the put a girl on guy? Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, like, God, man. It's so random. But he'll just call these businesses. So it'll be like, you know, day 200 of calling Taco Bell. And it's like, like the same store? Same store. Like location? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he started like branching out. I think he started like <clears throat> other stores, but he'll call and like, you know, he'll be like, uh, the order's going to be, or, the order for ground beef isn't going to be able to come in today. And then they'll like, you know, you hear the person, the employee get like all upset. And they're like, well, that's just not going to, that's not going to work. We, we need this. And, and he'll be like, well, there's a, there's one possible other option. And the person's like, all right, well, let's hear it. And he'll be like, put a girl on. Jeez. And he just says, put a girl on. Like, like, he, like he's trying to convince him to do something like... like no, like just put a girl, like he just wants to hear a girl's voice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, as a kid, so funny. Now as an adult, people wasting my time. I don't even like the like the robocalls. Oh, I hate them. You know, yeah, the same. freaking, ugh. Okay, yeah. anyway, let's listen to call number three. Mm -hmm. And I want you to like listen for some pretty interesting stuff that happens. The dad just goes full speed ahead. So pay yeah. attention to what the dad's saying because he he just begins to just really... We'll get personal with this with this uh, voice on the other end of the yeah. line. Mm -hmm. We'll return after these messages. There's something out there waiting for us. Hey, this is Bryce Johnson from the Bigfoot Collectors Club, and you're listening to Tyler and Woody on That Would Be Rad, because that is rad. Okay. Yeah, it's taking time from the talk. Who is this? Steven, I'm gonna, you're, this is not funny, you know. Brian, it's not Steven. What do you mean, Brian? I mean, uh, Gary. How do I know it's not Steven? It's not Steven. <laughs> Hello? Brian. I have a... Uh... Hold on, I just got to pause the call right there, dude. So funny, dude. <laughs> like, you've got... <clears throat> this is now the third call that you've got. A bunch of other weird stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Your dad accidentally calls you his other kid's name, which, by the way, dude, it's easier for me some t because I have a son and a daughter to not get him confused. Oh, not me. But I tell you what I do. I accidentally mix up my wife's name. I call my son my brother's name. I call my brother my son's name. But anyways, hilarious that he just takes the time to just be like, what do you yeah. mean, Brian? <laughs> like, he's so pissed right now, dude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, going back into it. And, well, also, I love the dad's just like, the dad's the one that's like, Brian, it's not Steven. Yeah, he's, he's like, like uh, uh, Gary, uh, Gary's Gary. like, what do you mean, Brian? Yeah. I mean, uh, Gary. <laughs> anyway. Brian, it's not Steven. What do you mean, Brian? I mean, uh, Gary. How do I know it's not Steven? <laughs> it's not Steven. Hello? I had a uh, UFO experience <laughs> in West Virginia, which you probably know. 
and I know that you're into uh, an intergalactic person. <laughs> Can you speak a little louder? Sir? Can you speak a little louder? Louder? Let me speak to him, Dad. I guess I don't know what. All right, I'll hang up so you can talk to me. He wants to talk to you. Okay. Hello, can I help you? Hello. Yes. Yes, that's me. Yes, could you please identify yourself? Identify. Yeah, I'm back. I'm in Texas right now. Oh, he asked me a question. No, I'm in New York right now. You know that. Why are you asking me such a question? Yes. Stephen, if this is you, um, I swear to God, I'm going to be pissed. Huh? I'm trying to listen to him. Who are, excuse me? <laughs> the dad's just dying to get in there. Okay. Uh, eventually, I'll be back from Texas. Uh, could you speak more? Please speak more. I guess it's not Steven. I believe it because I'm getting static. Will not three times. Let me go on this phone because I can never hear on this phone. Hold on. Okay. Okay, please speak. Hello? Keep an eye on the sky. Okay. Should I go out right now? Right. Right now? Okay, see, I'm not sure where Orion is now, but we'll go outside. It was show double from me. Repeat that again. That so far, that's my favorite call for mm -hmm. so many reasons. Number one, <laughs> dude, I just love, like I said, just I had to break in, dude. The dad oh. is just amazing, dude. Where he's just like, uh, wait, 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 wait what's, what's the line? He's like, uh, oh, yeah. His dad and Gary are kind of like, or Gary and his dad are kind of like going back and forth a little bit when he accidentally calls him Brian. So funny. And then, and then he's like, it's not Steven. And that's that, again, that older brother. And Gary's like, how do you, how do you know it's not Steven? He's like, it's not Steven. Then Dad just breaks in. He goes, I had a uh, UFO experience in West Virginia, which you probably know, and I know that you're uh, an intergalactic person. I mean, just straight in. <laughs> even even like if it were like some sort of extraterrestrial situation, it's like <laughs> it's just assuming that like like. It, they would all know that he had like a siding, right? Right. I just think yeah, yeah. So They're all from the same exact place. Yeah, right. And, and it's just uh, you know, and even Gary. I think Gary at this point, to me, I think he's more annoyed than he is like worried or scared. Mm -hmm. I think the dad immediately just thinks like my long lost friends have figured out a way to call me. This is it. Yeah, yeah. And the mom. I mean, she's in the background. You know. <laughs> Slapping each other with the hot mop. I mean, she's in the background. Firing you can hear it every now and then. She's just like, just shut the heck up. I mean, yeah, stuff like that. They're just arguing. Okay. Yeah. Then, it, you know, it goes back to the, when is he going to be back from Texas thing? But he also talks about the doubles and the full moon and Orion. Mm -hmm. It keeps on going back to that stuff. And so that was actually the end of the calls for that day, mm. at least for that specific night. Mm -hmm. But the following evening... The mysterious caller returned. Although Gary's mother was not present for this fourth one, Gary's father and his uncle Tom were. Uh, yeah, let's get into the next one. Okay. Before we do, listeners, I want you to keep your ears open during this call for 
something that said that to me, so, so far they've kind of ramped up a little bit in terms of my, like, which one is my favorite. Mm -hmm. This one is my ultimate favorite because of something said here. And it's somewhat early on in the call, but just keep your, keep your ears open for it. I might even break in after it's said because it's just insane. Mm. Okay? Okay. Yes, this is me. Can I speak to you? Can I ask why you're... Yes, can I ask why you're calling? Can I please ask... Yes, this is. Yes, that is me. To be within this planet. Say that again? Within this planet. Leave? I'm staying right here. To be within this planet. Is this a joke or what? Okay, that's not the end of the call, but already this is what I'm talking about. So in case you couldn't hear it perfectly or didn't understand what they were saying and we can't put subtitles in a podcast, mm -hmm. the voice, dude, full body chills. Yeah. The voice says, we come to be within this planet. Yeah. Gary says, say that again. The voice says, in this planet. And then Gary's like, leave. There's all these weird sounds. And then it slowly says, we come to be within this planet. Mm -hmm. Gary says, is this a joke or what? And then there's this weird sort of whirring sound so on scary. the other line, dude, that like when I first heard that, yeah. first off, I was listening to this in the dark. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just like, I hope listeners that you have a chance to listen to our show when like with headphones on mm -hmm. because I sometimes scare myself yeah. if I happen to be like, oh, I wonder how that ended up sounding. Mm -hmm. I was listening to this, it was in the dark on a walk in my neighborhood and that whirring sound sent yeah. chills up my spine. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not like burying the lead here, but there are some commonalities with, I mean, should I give, should I mention No, 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 not yet, not yet. Okay. Because okay. we gotta get, let's get back into the rest of the call. Let's finish this call, mm -hmm. folks. I just had to break in like I said I would because mm -hmm. when I heard that, I did not expect that, okay? I've expected... Yeah, when are you going to come back from Texas? Right, the guy, mm -hmm. you know, and then now we're we've just ramped it up enormously here. Mm -hmm. We're lit, lit, uh, to be within this planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, now remember I said that uh, the uncle was there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you if you love Gary's dad, boy, you're gonna love his uncle. Okay, get ready. Um. I have to think about that. I'd like to see you. To be contact as the same with you. Hey, let me tell you something. I've been listening to you. And I've had contacts with you. Government interference? You have? Please explain what type of interference. Oh, no. 
the sun will rise from the dark side of the moon. Okay, um, what branch of the government? What, uh, what should I do? to me or bad they hung up yeah so folks man that concludes the fourth and final call but mm. dude there's so much gold in this call oh, it's awesome. like i said if you loved gary's dad you're gonna love the uncle dude he doesn't even hold back he's just on one of these lines and he's just in between questions here and he says I've been listening in. Let me tell you. No, he let says, me tell hey, you something. let me tell you something. I've been <laughs> listening to you, and I've had contacts with you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then it, I mean, it's, it sounds like he's going to like threaten him first. Yeah. With right. that, like, let me tell you something. Yeah, it's almost like he's trying to say, like, hey, you can't trick us here. I've I've had contacts with you before. Go yeah. ahead, tell us what we need to know. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, that's when the voice says, "Beware, government interference." Mm-hmm. When asked about it again, uh, it just says government interference, visitations to be disrupted by them. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into that thing about like there's some unintelligible sort of like talking, and then it goes, it's like something appears, the sun will rise on the dark side of the moon, world, no. Um, It'll show double from you. Yeah, again, that, that that's just such a creepy line to me. Mm-hmm. The show double of you? Yeah. It's almost like, is he, is this entity... Okay, and for the benefit of just being able to like talk about this, let's, you know, not sort of decide on what we think about it yet and just say that as we're listening to this, as we're figuring things out, it's almost like potentially this entity, this voice on the other line is kind of mm-hmm. telling him, hey, there's going to be doubles of you. This is like a, to me... When I hear that, I'm like thinking, is there going to be a sort of merging or a uh, an intersection with another dimension potentially that you can like visualize if you're looking at Orion on a certain point and that's what this this caller is trying to, you know, give instruction to? Yeah, I mean, it also, just like the phrasing of of how it says like, on like the moon, like the dark side of the moon. What's that phrase again? How does he say that? Uh, the sun will rise. Oh, oh yeah, the on sun dark will rise side on the, the dark side of the moon. Yeah, but he doesn't even say the. It reminds me of uh, some of those weird. Which again, I know I've said this. Take a drink at this point. But there's a there's one of my all time favorite pre internet mysteries called the Toynbee Tiles, and they don't really know like where they come from. I think now they may have kind of pinpointed the guy and. I know most of you have no idea what I'm talking about, but there are these tiles that are left in public places, and we've actually seen them uh, whenever we tour. Mm-hmm. Had no idea what they were at the time, but they had these weird phrases with that same kind of sort of like primitive speech. Simplistic, yeah, yeah. Like it's just like there's one that just says like resurrect dead on planet Jupiter, mm-hmm. Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Like it, and it's kind of like on dark side of moon. Or on on dark side of, you know, it's like that weird like, like, like a kid maybe talking in a weird way. Kind of. It reminds me also of the Mayday mystery. Oh right. Mm-hmm. You know, cryptic clues and cryptic language used to convey some sort of message that maybe is too dangerous to just outright say. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe like the message. If, I don't know, man. It is interesting. It's kind of like um, almost, let's say, because they use the descriptor as robotic, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And 
or even if it was robotic, if it was alien, let's just say it was something that wasn't even just like a native English speaker, mm-hmm. right? I mean, heck, even whenever I, I God, well, I'll tell you what this reminds me of in just a second. But, you know, if someone or something is trying to speak your language, mm-hmm. more specifically on the robotic side, if you're thinking about their, like, let's just say computer language in general, it's like ones and zeros, dude. It's binary, right? And so right, it's pretty right. simplistic. In that same way, if they're trying to just be like, well, we want to convey the message, what's the quickest and easiest way to do that? Mm. You can shorten that sentence into like, sun will, sun will rise, dark side of moon. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But didn't it say, it's something like the sun will rise, and it doesn't say the on yeah. dark side of moon, still doesn't say the, but then, what did it world, say? World, no. Yeah, world, no. That's mm-hmm. that's so bizarre to me, man. Yeah, no. Yeah, and, then, and then it goes into the show, double... Bit, this time though, it doesn't say it, it, it. Like this is another reason why sometimes I think it. it I don't think it's a recording mm-hmm. because like this time around, or it just doesn't feel like one anyway. Yeah, it feels yeah, yeah. a little bit more organic, mm-hmm. or uh, not organic, but just like actually happening in real time. Yeah, right. Uh, it's because this time it says show double from you. Right, right. Instead of like of you. Mm-hmm. Little weird things like that, just and then like the beware government interference visitations to be distru- disrupted by them. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, you know what it actually is almost like it. It is almost like a what was it called? Not like, I mean, I guess this is kind of an example, sort of like like the Pony Express days, or like you're sending a uh, what are they called? Uh, yeah, like a uh, Telegram like or a, a Morse code. Yeah, yeah. To where it is like a little bit of like a shorthand kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be like. Hey, send this telegram. Okay. And then it's like, Tommy is coming, Tommy coming to town. Stop. Right, right, right. Arriving yeah, stop, early. Yeah. Stop. Mm-hmm. You know, to, to indicate the sentences. Yeah, yeah. It does kind of seem like that, like a very simple message as if maybe even, and I think we can kind of start talking about the things that it reminds us of. I mean, gosh, I said the May Day. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. In terms of language, okay. This is what it reminds me of. My family and I went to a Braves game last week. Mm-hmm. Or last weekend, and it was they were playing the LA Dodgers. Okay, and if you like baseball at all, you know that uh, there's this kid from Japan that is on the Dodgers, Otani, and he is incredible. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, I've never seen ever, I've never seen so many Japanese folks at a Braves game. Oh, cool! In my life, it was amazing, dude. So I love you've got it. all these fans that have come here to see. Otani, who's just like a national treasure, Mm -hmm. not only for us, but for them. I mean, he's incredible, dude. Really, really awesome kid. There's a documentary about him. I think it's on Disney that I encourage if you're a baseball fan or if if you're just a fan of watching somebody that is a good kid Mm -hmm. and and who's goal-driven and ended up, you know, basically his dreams coming true kind of thing because he planned for them. Yeah. I encourage you to watch it. Anyhow, we're sitting next to these like like these little old ladies and they're Japanese. And like, I'm like, oh man, I've, I've been trying to learn some Japanese on, uh, what's the app, dude? Duolingo. No, no, Duolingo. Oh, I think I could, you know, whatever. And then in my own mind, I don't even try, dude. I just speak English. I was like, hey, oh yeah, you guys are here for Otani. I don't even try because in my own mind, I feel like I'm going to come across being like, the sun will rise dark side of moon. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say something that I think is right, and it's going to be not right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, what the kashi wa, Woody. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> now, all that being said, it's interesting that the mom's first thought was, it sounds like a robot. The dad's mm-hmm. first thought was, it sounds, these are, hey, this is an intergalactic being, mm-hmm. right? Which, by the way, are we are we at a point where we can... Kind of get into what we, we yeah were, yeah let's do it man okay yeah 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 I, I all right think, continue yeah yeah it's just interesting to me that those are the two things that like come to mind and even when listening to me it doesn't really sound like a robot necessarily mm-hmm. it, at the same time there's certain elements of it kind of being an audio nerd it barely sounds like slowed down audio mm-hmm. in some ways and in others it doesn't really I would say if it is in fact slowed down. Mm-hmm. The reason why it doesn't to our ears now in the you know in 2024 doesn't sound like a filtered audio is because back then they would have used tape. 
Yeah, and real tape. It, when you slow things down with tape, it's it, it, believe it or not, it's actually a lot more natural sounding. It doesn't sound like you know mm. when you slow it down digitally. There's a lot more artificial sounding. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, yeah, that could be a thing. To me, it there's elements of it that sound like that sometimes, and then others, it just sounds like. That's just the guy doing some with his voice. You know what I mean? Well, so so I didn't really like look super hard for this, but when I first heard about this case, I had I had seen, I think, I think maybe I had heard about it like on one of the super like mysterious or uh mysterious universe or darkness radio, one of those like really old podcasts that have been around forever. And then I remember looking it up on YouTube, and I couldn't find it when I looked for it in research, looking, you know, kind of getting ready for this episode. But the one that I found, there was a video where I think it was Gary. I mean, it's been years at this point, but I think it was actually Gary Sudbring, the main character of the story. And again, I'm, I could be misremembering this, but I want to say he was like giving like a like a panel or giving like a maybe like a convention type thing. And he was showing how they had done like voice analysis mm, mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Did you did you find this? I, I didn't find the actual thing, but I read about how okay, good. They, they did the multiple things on the audio to yeah. to sort of study whether or not the, the pattern once sped up uh, right. and cleaned up a little bit matched Gary's. Yeah. And... Their ultimate conclusion was no, it did not. It did not. So it was someone else, no matter what. At the end of the day, it was mm-hmm. not Gary. Well, the, the other thing that that I remember is they, which I don't know how this is possible because to you know to my ears, to Woody's ears, people who, you know, we we're we're very headphones are on our head twenty four seven. Yeah, we we're very well versed in like audio and like. Mm-hmm you know, with, like, sound design and, like, changing stuff, modulation, all that kind of stuff. To me, yes, it does sound like there's some sort of, some sort of, like, pitching happening, mm-hmm. some sort of octave kind of thing happening. And, but I do remember in this particular video, they had kind of broken it down. And, like, like what you were saying, even even when we're hearing, like, them repeating, like, uh, Orion or, like, mm-hmm. near Orion, there, the patterns are different every single time, and so I thought, well, maybe you know, maybe maybe it is like somebody talking, but but it is like slowed down. But in the video that I that I saw originally, even that they they debunked that it didn't have like a lot of I guess like the sort of the characteristic like markers of it mm-hmm. being slowed down. Right. So whatever was like sort of generating this sound wasn't altered. That's like how it was coming out. Right. Which is kind of scary in a weird way. Yeah. You know? For sure. For sure. I mean, anytime, well, anytime there's like a theory of like trying to rationalize any sort of potentially scary, and again, listening to these calls, it's hard for me to just be spooked the whole time just because mm. of the dynamics in the family. Oh, it's so funny. You know, uh, yeah. can there be a more New York name than Gary? Uh, you know, <laughs> stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But when you're looking at it through the lens of like, okay, what what's going on? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, of course, at this point, it's impossible to, to you know, prove what mm-hmm. it is. But here's some other things that happened to Gary that I learned about through a more recent. I think the interview was about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he was interviewed on a on a show, like a podcast. It was like a live stream or something like that. And I happened to see it. And here's some other like instances uh, when the host asked him, like, "Has anything else kind of happened?" He's like, "Well, you know, like." I never really thought about this until like this event happened. Then I began to sort of piece together certain things throughout life that seemed odd and in some way could be, you know, potentially related. Mm. We will return after these messages. America's future can be determined by our dreams and our visions. It was very convenient for for over 200 years, there have been reports of giant man-like creatures from another dimension, another world, I don't know. The most intriguing mystery on the North American continent. This is Joshua Cutchen, and you're at my home for weirdness. That would be rad. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, he actually had a couple like really, really weird things. The first one, though, when he was much like a few years pre- before that in 1988 or 89, he said that he went to Egypt and Greece mm-hmm. with his brother Stephen and a friend. All right. Okay. Now, they have multiple flights, you know, from, of course, New York to overseas and just like different. Uh, they spend some time in one area, fly like layovers out. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, layovers, but also just like, hey, we're in Greece. You oh, know right, what I mean? Right. Uh, and then now we're going to Egypt and we spend some time. And it's all sort of like broken up, I mean, kind of randomly, but just, you know, mm-hmm. no, they're not going with like a tour or something. Right, right, right. right. It's, it's, a, it's a, like we would we have a layover here, so let's spend a day there. Yeah, and or, hey, we're planning on this. We're going to spend like four days here, and then we're going to fly a little plane to there, and then mm-hmm. we're going to spend some time there. Again, it's not like they're on a cruise. We're like, okay, guys, we got a day and a half to disembark right. and then come back. Okay. And I only say that because I think it's an important detail when you start, when you understand what happened to this guy. He notices mm-hmm. this guy on his first flight that just kind of stands out to him for some reason. Mm-hmm. Then on every single one of all of the other corresponding flights, he sees the same dude is on the plane with him, dude. Oh. He doesn't see him anywhere else, but only whenever they're flying each time. And again, the, and that's the, impossible. The, the flights, yeah, yeah. It's not like it was, oh, it is the connecting flight that's going to some, no, no, no. Flies to one place, they spend their own time, gets on another plane, flies to another place. So, okay, if it happened maybe the first two flights, mm-hmm. you could maybe say, well, You know, maybe there weren't that many flights going in and out of a certain airport. But then you're thinking like, you know, how many people do you know of it are just like, hey, we're going to Greece, might as well head up Egypt too. Yeah, right. You know, so that's Mm -hmm. already too random to happen. But then it's not just like two flights. It's like five or six Mm -hmm. throughout the whole trip, dude. And then just never sees him again. Okay. Then listen to this about... 10 to 15 years from the time of the interview. So let's say mid to early 2000s. Mm-hmm. He is uh, at Shenandoah National Park mm-hmm. and he wants to shoot off some fireworks or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he goes off into this distance and he starts hearing strange sounds in the woods that kind of freak him out. And he's just like, um, that was Disembodied weird. Disembodied um, voices. Well, and he thought, well, you know, was it? a Bigfoot encounter? Was it some sort of like something? Mm -hmm. Then again, well, uh, let's see, what is the other experience, dude? I swear there was one from like when he was a little kid. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't have it exactly written, but I just remembered. When he was a little kid, I want to say like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight. Mm -hmm. A, A very small, seemingly insignificant situation happened to him when this person came up to him Mm-hmm. and said, similarly to the guy that he saw the first time in the airport in San Antonio, came up to him and said, are you Gary? And he said, yeah. And it weirded him out, and he just like walked off. Little kid Gary. Hmm. So little things like that ha- have happened to him throughout his life. When we're thinking about, okay, what's going on here? Obviously, you know, Gary's dad, he seems to think yeah. intergalactic beings. Mm-hmm. This voice said, Something about, you know, from within the planet. So yeah. then we can, you know, dive into like inner earth theories. Yeah, to be within this planet. Here's another thing to kind of just like throw a wrench into the whole thing. Remember I said this happened in February of 93. Mm-hmm. Just a couple of weeks later. So this was February. The calls came in on February 9th was the last one, the fourth and final call. Mm-hmm. A couple of weeks later in New York City, no less. February 26th. 1993 was when the first World Trade Center bombing occurred. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the first the first real one. Yeah, yeah. So, like, this was the one that was in the parking garage in the, the World Trade not, Center. The other's not been. <laughs> the other one wasn't a, uh, a parking garage. But mm-hmm. I just found that to be, like, a strange... Yeah. A strange... I don't even know if I want to call it a coincidence or just... Some strange connective tissue here in that he's getting these weird calls. He's in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. He's got people asking him, hey, you know, in the airport, like, where are you going? What are you doing? People, Mm -hmm. you know, writing stuff down. And then a large historic event occurs. Mm. It's just weird to me. Yeah, also, 
going back to what something you said at the beginning of the episode is when his friend Mike, you know, who he originally I think really thought was like just like pranking him, you right? Know? Remember, Mike told Gary the day before the call that someone had called him that sounded just like mm-hmm. Gary, claiming to also be visiting family. Mm-hmm. That said, what did you say? He said he he went to like a different airport. Oh yeah, he said yeah. Uh, the guy said Laguardia, that, maybe. He yeah, said? yeah, yeah, yeah. What? But he flew in JFK, so mm-hmm. that's weird. And then he said that he was he was sick and wasn't able to hang out. I wonder if this was the same character calling his mm-hmm. friend Mike, and then maybe Mike being like, "Well, Gary, you don't really sound like yourself because of the obvious like, yeah, whatever's going on with those going that, back to the track. Yeah, and then him saying like. Oh well, I'm sick. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, to me, and that's again crazy. to point out the fact that like Gary didn't call Mike before going to New York, right? And so the reason he called him when he land or when he got there was that he was like, "Hey, dude, I'm in town." Mm-hmm. And Gary, and then Mike's like, "Yeah, no, man, you called me yesterday. You said you flew into Laguardia." And Mike's like, "What?" Yeah. So then sometimes I think that sometimes I'm like, okay. And this is what I mean by my opinion kind of goes back and forth. In terms of it being, first off, I don't think Gary was behind it if it was a hoax. And by Mm -hmm. hoax, I mean if this was just like a human-driven thing, somebody's messing with them like as a joke. I mean, the main thing, like if I think it's Mm human-driven and not anything else, it's like there's something about maybe the intelligence that Gary knows with the Air Force that these people are trying to like make sure it doesn't get out or fit, find out from him because mm-hmm. it's like they know his destination. They know, uh, and here's the other part, man, and I know everybody's going to get mad at me. But here's why I think, <laughs> here's why I think it's a time traveler mm. or some sort of dimensional type thing where someone knows precise locations and times and stuff, mm-hmm. but just kind of off. The fact that there's that guy at the airport. Yeah. Two, no, two guys at the airport. Yeah, that's right. Well, I one just mean like in the terminal, him. right? And then there's one yeah. like on the airplane. Then on he the has plane. these moments where like there's somebody that he recognizes on a plane mm-hmm. when he's on vacation. Then as a youngster, all these different weird things. Is oh, it, and, and the year before all this happened, his brother seeing him in his same car driving beside him, made faces at him and then sped mm-hmm. off. Yep. Even though he was nowhere near, he didn't have his car. Yep. Uh Continue and didn't have that type of car either, right? Right, so it's like, is it a like, is the doppelganger type thing a situation where it is a evil entity, a disembodied voice that's like Mm -hmm. taking that form Mm -hmm. to try and be nefarious, or is it a situation where this is a guy who's like, here, here's why I started thinking about the time travel thing. My son and I were talking about the bootstrap paradox, brought mm-hmm. up to, to me by him, by the way, which was really cool. Very simple, huh? easy, easy to easy conversation. Yeah, yeah. It, but, but what I'm saying is, like, he no, was talking about. He's like, hey, Dad, uh, you know what's cool? Uh, and and I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's called the boot, bootstrap paradox. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, man, doesn't it make you think? And so, anyways, we started talking about it. And then we again synchronicity. We were talking, or we were doing this episode. And as I was reading about it and learning about it, I started to think, dude, okay, if time travel was possible, mm-hmm. and you did something good, right, to to save the world, and you you were able to like destroy the bad guy, and mm-hmm. by doing so, things shifted and things changed. Mm-hmm. What if there was some residue there that you couldn't avoid? Now. That doesn't mean that someone isn't born or whatever, but it does sort of shift the timeline in a way to where there's like some a little bit of, of a mess that you can't really clean up. Mm. And so maybe when these other people are experiencing, you know, seeing him driving by or getting these weird phone calls, these are things that would have happened, these events like would have happened in terms of like the timeline, but mm-hmm. there's slightly different because of maybe Gary in some alternate sort of timeline or universe saves the world. And by mm. doing so now, he just has this weird phone call. Do you, you, oh, right. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of, I mean, even the same terminology of like residue, it reminds me of something that we're both huge fans of, and that's like the Mandela effect. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's kind of how, 
I mean, if you folks don't know what that is, you can go back and listen here. Hear more about this on That Would Be Rad, Season 1, Episode 26, The Mega Mandela Effect Episode. Basically, it's little things that have kind of changed or been altered in history, like things that we just knew as a fact. Then the residue aspect of this is like, so for example, like, you know, the famous, uh, is it Hit Me Baby One More Time? Like the Britney Spears video. She's dressed as a schoolgirl. She has a cardigan, mm -hmm. a button up, a plaid skirt. Well, now you go look and she has only ever had a black skirt on. She never had a plaid skirt. However, what's weird is you start looking at like Halloween costumes that are like, of that era that are like, you know, Britney Spears Halloween costume, Britney Spears schoolgirl uniform. Mm -hmm. uh, even Britney Spears herself dressing like she did in the video, you know, 20 years later. And in all of these, she has a plaid skirt. So like what has happened? Mm -hmm. And so they call that residue where it's like, whatever is like sort of changed in the timeline. Yes, you know, I, I like to look at it as like, almost like an AI thing, like, Something kind of went through and it scrubbed everything out, but it wasn't, it, it didn't have the self awareness to, enough to like also filter out like the other sort of like supplementary things like Halloween costumes around mm -hmm. that era and, you know, stuff like that. So, like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it is like some sort of uh, like residue just left within the, the timeline or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then. A couple other things, you know, I, I said previously the dad and uncle had had other experiences. I think they had one later uh, where they saw a UFO. Uh, well, actually, I, I did find this. It said, Gary's father and uncle seemed to have been very into UFOs and paranormal culture. Not only had they gone to study an alleged UFO crash the year prior, 1992, but they were part of the Long Island UFO group prior to this call taking place. They reported their own experience. A lot of people point actually at this as uh, as like, oh, well, they were doing, they're the ones who were like doing the prank because they were like so into UFO, you know, sort of culture, I guess. But right. to me, I find that very, uh, to me, it just doesn't pass like the smell test just because you can, you know, you can hear the enthusiasm in the dad's voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to... I mean, he's he's got to either be the greatest actor in the world, uh, or it's just there's no way to yeah. to fake that. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, if anything, again, if it was a hoax, the only way I think that's possible necessarily. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'll just say I just don't think anyone in Gary's family was involved, other than Stephen. Haven't heard from him, you know, or yeah. Brian. Mm -hmm. What's interesting too is like there's there is kind of a connection between like weird phone calls connected with UFO sightings and paranormal mm. events and stuff. I'm glad You've you got the stuff this. like, we always say this before we talk or reference a subject that we haven't had a, an official episode on, and I'm sure we will, but you have the infamous men in black cases where mm -hmm. witnesses report receiving strange sort of monotone, mm -hmm. uh, even robotic phone yep. calls after UFO sightings. Yep. They kind of sound somewhat artificial, kind of like Gary's caller. Yes, and this is one of my all-time favorite topics because it is, to me, the men in black stuff is just, and no, we're not talking about like Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. This is something that's been around, you know, around like the the 50s. I think, was it Woody Derenberger? I may have the, the wrong name, but... Uh, Woody Brown. <laughs> Woody Brown, time traveler. Uh, no, there's a guy named Nick Redfern who's done a ton of research on it. And man, I would love to have him on because he's just, he's amazing. Like he has a book just on like, women in black also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he really gets sort of granular in the research. But yeah, it's it to me, like I'm glad we're kind of in the point where we can, or at the point where we can kind of go into what we think it is. There's so many things about this that feel like classic men in black encounters. And so if you're totally new, welcome. But also men in black are usually if a person had a UFO sighting or just sort of weird anomalous things happened that they were like privy to information or they witnessed an event. Typically, especially back in the 50s and 60s, there would there would come a visit or a phone call from these men in black. And they, you know, they were known as for having like these black sort of very nondescript, you know, suit jacket, matching pants, tie, tie bar, 
the whole deal that wore usually wore like a fedora, sometimes an overcoat. Typically, they would drive in these like black sort of Cadillacs, like sort of 50s, 60s era Cadillacs. A lot of times, like the all of the emblems or anything that would associate it with like a brand would would be like have been taken off of the car or it mm. looked like they just didn't. So like imagine like a 60s Cadillac without any of the Cadillac logo, mm -hmm. which is sort of weird within itself. But the idea was like, okay, well, maybe these characters are originally the thought was, well, they're they're coming from, you know, the government and they're sort of government officials that are basically coming out to kind of put fear into these people so they don't say anything and and to confiscate any sort of evidence, which is a very common thing too. You know, if somebody took a picture of a craft or something, which we've discussed numerous times, there would, like the, uh, we just covered like the Kecksburg UFO. Mm -hmm. There again, they were visited by these men who said that they were there from the government and they took, you know, the rolls of film that he had or the photos and, you know, of course you never see them again. And then usually also the person, you know, the the witness or whatever would end up calling like the the local office of of whoever they said they were from, whether it was Air Force or whatever, and they would say, "Hey, you know, they you guys took my film," and they would say, "Well, we have no reports of anybody coming out," mm -hmm. which is also weird. But the weird thing is, and the high strangeness part comes in, which is my favorite part, is or there's there's so many of these encounters where there's just these really high strangeness aspects of men in black, where they have no hair, they have no eyebrows, mm -hmm. uh, they have no lips. And so it looks like they've like painted on like lipstick to give Te the appearance. Just terrifying. Terrifying. Mm -hmm. And there's one of my favorite, and my good buddy Jesse, we used to be obsessed with this photo, those like Time Life UFO mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. There's one, uh, it's like, it is the one that has like the UFO on the cover. And if you look, there's a section on men in black and there's a painting of this particular character and we'll feature it in, well, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll wait, but there's a painting of a man in black who has a shaved head and who has like red lips and it is so scary. Oh man, that sounds yeah. so terrifying. But one of the things too is like, there was another aspect of these things, which this is one of the first things that I thought of when hearing this is from the very first phone message out of the four, the, the very first one, it's a lot louder. It's mm -hmm. a lot more, it sounds like it's more, like the responses are sort of more direct. Mm -hmm. But then as it goes, by the time you get to the fourth one, which is like a day later, it almost sounds like every single time it says something, it's very, very low in volume. It almost feels like slower, like, mm -hmm. are you in text or mm -hmm. like kind of thing. And one of the thing with, with these men in black encounters are is people would note that, you know, if they, if, if they came into their home, for example, they would... They said they would come. It would come to a point where they would be asking questions. A lot of times, the questions are just super bizarre, you know, very socially unaware questions. Sometimes, like a lady was like, "Oh, I just made Jello. Would you like to have some?" And she ended up giving it to one of the men in black. The you know, she thought it was a government official, but right. And he didn't know how to even eat it. Like he would put it to his mouth, and then he would just let it go, and it would just like fall out. Like he had never oh, eaten so before. weird, dude. But one of the things is they also say that it's almost like they're battery powered and the beginning of the conversation to the end, it's like they get quieter and that they're, whatever they're saying starts sort of trailing off and mm. like slowing down. Yeah, like so, they're running out of energy. Running out of like battery or energy, yeah. Which kind of sounds like that's happening in Gary's calls. Exactly. So weird, man. Yeah, dude. I love it, man. Oh, it's so creepy, man. And like, again, kind of going back to like the doppelganger aspect. Mm -hmm. And I hate to do it, but this kind of reminds me of that movie that I can't find. But, <laughs> you know, where there's like this situation <laughs> where there is even just the concept of doppelgangers in general mm -hmm. is, is a fascinating one to me. There are cases that exist, uh, even relatively pretty recently and stuff of where people and thanks to the internet now you can kind of see oh man that you know what the heck that person looks exactly the same or they'll mm -hmm. have like the same name and do the same thing and like oh yeah i always wonder when i'm watching these movies where there's an aspect of time travel or even another dimension or alternate dimension where you see another version of yourself mm. i feel like that might be one of those moments where mentally your mind is just in in just 
pure shock. Right? Yeah, like, like you, you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, yeah, you it. wouldn't be able to do it. You know. Yeah, uh, that's something that I do wonder about sometimes. It's like if I saw myself, like let's say an older version of myself, like mm-hmm. if I saw what I look like twenty years from now in person, would I would I be able to recognize them? Or even as like a young. I'm sure like if I saw the younger version of myself, but I'm just like, if I was 16 and I saw the 44-year-old me right now, Mm -hmm. I don't think I, you know what I mean? Would your mind be able to wrap around that? Would you be able to say, oh gosh, that's me, but like future? Yeah, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like when I first saw, you know, one of the Star Wars prequels and then you see like the bonus footage where they, they cut out the female Yoda (laughs) <laughs> it looked to me exactly like Tyler. And it's one of those mysteries that to this day I just can't uh, oh. I can't figure out. <laughs> yeah, it is funny because I have this uh this photo that's Woody's like profile photo like whenever you he calls on my phone and it's this really touching story of a Muslim nope. and a Christian uh one is blind and he would carry the the small Christian man on his back because he was unable to walk and he was only like two and a half feet tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he looks identical. Come on, come on. Yeah. Well, come on, we're getting off track here. <laughs> All right. Well, real, real, real quick. So going back to just before we leave, like the, the doppelganger aspect, it is weird because, you know, you have these, these uh, the, the traits of a typical doppelganger. And here's the other weird thing. In sort of, I think it's high German is where the word originally comes from. And it's so creepy to me for some reason. I don't know why this is so creepy, but the word doppelganger means double mm. walker. Yeah. Which is just that like very mm-hmm. like ambiguously creepy kind of thing. Yeah. But it's like, okay, so the brothers or the brother saw him in a car a year prior. A mm-hmm. day before they get these phone calls, they end up calling his friend Mike and pretending that he's them and saying, mm-hmm. oh, well, I'm sick or whatever. Yeah. Then they call him and he's saying, show double from you or or it will show double from you. And I think that, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think, I'd like, okay, so when you imagine this story, do you picture this thing as more of like, or, like an organic kind of thing or do you think it's more like, I mean, I just hope that this doesn't robot. come back to like bite us in the rear when I say this, because this could be either what everybody loves or what somebody listening hates mm-hmm. that I'm about to say. And that is like, to me, whenever I picture it, because oh, no. here's the thing, there's all these things that add up to, they know where he's going to be. They know yeah. where he's going mm-hmm. for the most part. They got mm-hmm. a couple of the details wrong, but right. is it like, is it just insane amount of surveillance on this one person, and then they're just messing with him, or yeah, but why would is it? Is sorry it, to interrupt, but why would it call like his friend though, and tell him all these things about like what he's done when he's doing it the next day, and he and they're that's like, where I go back to the residue thing. It's just like an accidental yeah, artifact, but right. I feel like to me it feels mostly like if it's a doppelganger, it's it's him from another time, mm. because. Mm-hmm. You know, you would kind of know, especially back then. I mean, like, if you asked me, what did I do on September 1st, 2020? I'd be like, uh, you know, I'd have to look at my calendar and I'd be like, okay, at this time I was probably here. Mm-hmm. But I would get some of the details wrong, mm-hmm. you know. And at some point you'd get them right enough that you'd be able to interact with that person. And perhaps communication from wherever he's communicating mm-hmm. is l- so limited that you can only kind of get certain pieces of information across based on the technology that you've got. And so maybe early 90s, you could type out something and it would be like, me oh, love right. you, loib you a long time. Long time. Get out of my off five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I also, like it also kind of takes me back to like Philip K. Dick. Uh, he's the guy who wrote, uh, it originally had a different name, Clay, here's where you come in. Mm-hmm. But the movie Adjustment Bureau, where... Mm-hmm. It was kind of a play off of like the Men in Black, but they were these, you know, sort of characters like that that uh, sort of occupied this sort of cosmic space. You know, they they kind of wore the very uh, timeless clothes of like a suit, a fedora. You know, that would kind of look normal in twenty twenty four or nineteen fifties, um, and and so they're kind of like their jobs are 
they were able to kind of open these doors into different areas and their jobs were to kind of like either cut off loose ends or kind of like what we're talking about, these weird little details, like maybe him seeing that guy on the plane, you know, years prior when they were traveling or whatever, like these little things that like maybe, maybe that person was there to, to stall them for like 30 extra seconds so they wouldn't mm -hmm. leave early and then, you know, it would alter the timeline or whatever. It's, it's that kind of idea that feels, I don't know, it feels interesting because part of me thinks that like, and again, this is sort of, uh, sort of tinfoil hat, like, you know, true believer kind of vibes here. But I do think that there could be an element of the men in black that that is kind of like the directive. I mean, mm -hmm. even with like the the Solway Firth, you mm -hmm. know, sighting, uh, the, you know, they were also, you know, we took these pictures of like this sort of space, Solway Firth spaceman, which I gave Woody a framed photo mm -hmm. of. Uh, everyone always asks me when they come to my office, uh, oh, um, hmm, who's this? <laughs> is that your daughter? Like, it's, it's a long story. It's all the way for a spaceman. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but it is the idea that, and also another thing that is interesting is, um, and I just had it and I totally lost it, is um, the area where they live was on Long Island. There's a place called Brookhaven National Laboratory. Mm. There was like a former lab, uh, former military base, and it was kind of like partially where a lot of like the Stranger Things was sort of inspired by. So mm. like you had like Camp Hero, and then like the Montauk the Montauk stuff. Project yeah, stuff. Wow. Uh, but this was like another one that sort of was sort of doing the same thing. They were messing with you know high flux beam reactors and all this kind of stuff. And that was one of the things that the the Long Island UFO Network that, you know, the two, the, the uncle and then the dad were a part of. Mm -hmm. The leader of that that group was a guy named John Ford, and he was kind of obsessed with uh, tracking down stuff with with Brookhaven. So, Man. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe even that had something. It is hard to, to over, it is hard to sort of bypass all of the, you know, near, look near Orion. Mm. There's also some, like, connective, connective tissue between, like, this type of weird thing, strange phone calls, and like mm -hmm. even something like Mothman. Yeah, John like, Kill, yeah. You know, John Kill, I think, got yeah, a series of mysterious yep. phone calls, and Same. there's that weird sort of harbinger uh, aspect of it, especially since, like again, like I said, a few weeks later, yeah, World Trade Center. What You know what I mean? I mean, there's yeah. just so many different things yeah. that are a part of this that it's like, Man, I don't really know. It's it's creepy. It's weird. It's early nineties. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just something that it's hard to. I think nowadays have a case like this that would be even this believable. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that think you know it's just an elaborate hoax. My yeah. gosh, quite the uh, elaborate one. And mm -hmm. and I don't mean that because you know. Is it impossible to slow down your voice at 1993 and say weird stuff to freak someone out? No. Mm -hmm. But what is you know more difficult is to know all the information that they knew that he was you know stationed in Texas. It mm -hmm. had to be somebody that knew him really well, knew somehow that he had left and right. was back in New York, right? Because again, he didn't tell anyone. Um, you know, and I just thought of this in. in in terms of it being sort of like uh, someone that's trying to m maybe keep him alive or keep him from doing something or whatever, when we're talking about like men in black, this is just something that popped in my head when you were talking about it. Imagine like in the future if, and it's kind of, gro I guess, grotesque to think about, but if the capability of like 3D printing, mm -hmm. if you could 3D print something that was not human, but organic, Mm. In 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 human shaped, I should right. say. Yeah, there'd be a lot of sort of features that they might not get right, or mm -hmm. they don't have full capability of doing yet. And then, of course, their behavior, programming wise, would be slightly weird and off as well. You know, and yeah. so maybe that's the thing. Maybe and and also, it would be safer to send that quote unquote organism. Oh, to box. a different time than yeah. it would be a human because, mm -hmm. you know, who knows what could happen, right? And so maybe the first sort of 
iteration, you know, the 1.0 mm-hmm. uh, th- that we have experienced as humans mm-hmm. thus far, we're really that sort of, you know, 1.0 version. And then, yeah. like, as it got better over time, these things are happening and we just don't know it. Well, that that's what I kind of do feel like some of the Men in Black stuff possibly be. I don't, I don't know that it's like a, I mean, my personal belief, I think it may be like a more, like, dimensional kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I also think that, well, a few things. I think that the idea, um, I think the phone calls, you know, if you take nothing else from them, if if even if it's completely fake, whatever, if nothing else, those phone calls, I'm sure, impacted Gary so much that he was like, ultra aware mm-hmm. from that point on. So yeah. so maybe they're like you were saying like the the original bombing and stuff, maybe like maybe and it it you know these things are created to just do just have enough energy or just do the bare minimum to make him like to put him on his toes in those situations. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, maybe he's in New York and like he's supposed to do something but he gets like a feeling like I don't know this kind of reminds me of you know maybe like yeah. on the news he sees like oh you can see Orion Tonight, and that makes him think. Oh, I don't know if I should do this tomorrow. Like, I know that's a weird example, right? Right. What is like the little choices that lead to like? Right. It's sort of like if you're orienteering with a map and you've got your compass. Mm-hmm. If you're just half a degree off, slightly off, over yeah. a long sort of stretch of land or whatever, mm-hmm. you, you know, you could end up miles away from your, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, the destination, destination you're trying to reach. Yeah. Yeah. And so. The same, I think, is true with like our day to day choices, man. And it's like yeah, also what fascinates me about this sort of multiverse sort of theory and all that is just like all the millions of decisions that we make, even just as micro as they might seem, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, sometimes I find myself like I'm working and I don't, I'm like, man, I'm really thirsty, but I'm just like really in whatever mm-hmm. I'm doing. And, and then, I don't get up at that moment. Well, what what would have happened if I did get up at that moment mm-hmm. and I decide to go check the mail? Well, I go check the mail and I see a neighbor's there. I have a conversation. You know, there's just so many, yeah. I mean, I get, you know, infinite number of possibilities right. of how the universe and our time mm-hmm. is shaped based on everyone else's infinite possibilities. Yeah, yeah. You know well, what I mean? Well, and I, I think... Going so back cool. to, to John Keel, you know, the who wrote the the Mothman prophecies, like you were saying, he he received like numerous telephone calls and he would get them, uh, which this is another thing that's that we haven't mentioned that I do think is interesting is the fact that it called him, you know, if if we're taking this if, at face value and it is some sort of weird, paranormal, anomalous mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. it didn't call him at his house, it called him at his parents' house. Mm. And that's something with John Keel where he would get these telephone calls like when he was out on the road in his like hotel room. Mm-hmm. And he and he also talked about them being, they would sound like a person, but they would be like mechanical in mm-hmm. nature. Like there mm-hmm. would be these weird like pops and like kind of like uh, beeps and stuff in the background, which again, mm-hmm. Sam the Sandown Clown. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other thing which John Keel talks about and a lot of the early Men in Black cases would talk about and this, to me, is the absolute scariest part of any of these calls is they would talk how they would be, you know, sort of mid-sentence, and then they would like, or, or you know, they would say a sentence, and then there would be a pause, and then it would be like this sort of like whirring, like, like it was like, hmm. like charging up or, or something. And, and so that's where a lot of like the debunkers are like, oh, that's just them like recording, like, or like rewinding the tape player. And it's like... Dude, do you know how like accurate you would have to be? Oh God, to, to find do that, it. dude. That's another thing the the generation, our well, like our kids' generation just doesn't understand. Although mm-hmm. mine do because we have Walkman and stuff. Yeah, trying to find a specific song on a tape impossible. Dude. Dang near impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I think uh, I could talk about this for another couple hours. Mm-hmm. I think we could talk about it for hours, but ultimately, I think we both can agree. And listeners, I know that you will. What a cool, strange, yeah. creepy, sometimes hilarious, Gary's dad and uncle, I'm looking at you, and mom, uh, case this was, man. And I love it whenever we like stumble upon these things, you know, and think, oh man, we haven't talked about that yet, and then dive into them. Uh, it's just so good, man. Yeah, so dude. Good. It's awesome. We may end up talking about this a little more 
uh, on the the next Patreon, just because mm-hmm. there's still some some meat on that bone. Uh, if you would like to, you know, reach out to us, you can over on Instagram. Uh, drop us a DM. Jump in the comment section. Tell us tell us how much you love the podcast and how much you just adore us as host. If you have your own sort of paranormal encounter, maybe local uh, urban legend, shoot us a DM or shoot it to that would be rad pod at gmail.com. Even better than that, if you would like to put it in your own voice, you can do so at our website, that would be radpodcast.com, where you can leave like a little voice memo and uh, yeah, possibly hear it in an upcoming episode. Uh, we do have some new merch on the way. We're kind of ironing out a few things with the printer. But there's some big things on the horizon. And as you know, Halloween season is almost here and we're so psyched. It's going to be awesome. Go tell a friend about the show. Go give us a five-star review. It really does. uh, It really does help and it means the world to us. And like I said before with our Patreon, if you just aren't getting enough, that would be rad goodness. Head on over to our Patreon, The Rabbit Trail, where it's just more of what you love. And uh, it really helps the show stay on the tracks. And we are so grateful and so appreciative uh, to all of our Patreons that are on there now. You got anything else, Woody? I think that's it, man. All right. Well, we love you. We appreciate you. And as always, be red. That's the way it goes.
access hey, granted. Hey, Woody, hold on just a second, bud. What's going on? Okay. Well, then. What's going on? Okay. I love you. I love you. I don't know if I'm coming back before. What do you mean? I'm, I don't know if I'm going to come back to the house before. Oh, before tonight's thing? Yeah. I love you, too. I love you. Okay, love you. Woody said he loves you, too. Woody said he loves you, too. I love him. Too far, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Um, she said Anne Anne. And Woodrow. Oh, here we go. Now we're I mean, it's a party. If I, if I could just be honest, I kind of enjoy the sound of her voice a lot better anyway. But, like, That's okay. <laughs> 